from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to the Lucas and Roddenberry franchises, the Martian Chronicles, and beyond. Science fiction is undeniably a part of our culture. But what exactly is science fiction? And how do you write a science fiction novel? This series will attempt to answer those questions. Okay, welcome everybody. We're we're back in virtual studio uh, with Kate and Adam. It's been a few weeks. Uh, there has been a homework task, and Adam has been very diligent and come up with a first draft, which we're going to sink our teeth into, uh, explore, and dissect and enjoy. So um, it's 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 going to be enjoyable. Uh, how's everybody been after a couple weeks navigating their summer? It's good, good. Right? There's so many things going on in the summer, and now we're into September, and uh, you know, school's back in, and I, I don't know. It's, it's it's like a changing of the seasons. All of a sudden, people are busy again, and people are back from vacation, and all these kind of things. So, um, what are you guys' thoughts on COVID right now? Uh, exhausted. Anybody over it? Yeah. 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 We're back to mandatory masks and all that. And I don't know. It's it's frustrating for me to be to be inoculated. Oh every time we get a every time we get a, a variance and a resurgence, I'm like, oh no, our book's coming true. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the book is unfolding. Uh, you know, for everybody to see. And so, um, yeah, so I, uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, do you guys want me to kind of, you know, start off with the first few paragraphs? I can, I can read, you know, the first little intro here and, and kind of get the, the feel of what Adam put together. Sure. Yeah. Let's have okay. at her. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Better first, you than me. first go, I'm pretty nervous, but hack it apart. Let's, let's, uh, well, we, but it's, it. let's not, we're not going to hack it. There's, I've, I had a, I had a read through. And I think it was pretty, pretty good. So um, let, let's just give it a shot here. So yeah. it starts off and says, uh, my dreams are not my own. There are always, they are always the same. And this one starts the same as any other. I'm floating through a dark place. There are lights, but not the kind that provide comfort. These are more like streaks of light that I can only see in my peripheral. Trying to look is pointless. There are always, they are always just beyond my field of view. But I know this to be temporary. The good stuff comes soon. Building a little bit of tension there. <laughs> Rays of light begin to penetrate the dark, along with a feeling of warmth. It's like watching a favorite movie. Sounds of birds and wildlife be begin to filter in as suddenly I am outside, still floating on what I have long ago decided must be a stream. It is actually incredibly relaxing and euphoric, and I look forward to this part. The only small blip registered in the back of my mind is that there is no random eddies or changes in direction. I do not scrape over rocks or bob lazily as I move. As a result, it feels artificial, like it's not quite right. Damn, I think it's great. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Have you, you read know, it, Caitlin? Yes. Yeah. So what was what was your take, Caitlin? Um, was it was it something that you felt like you kept wanting to read the next paragraph? So it, it was really funny for me because we've discussed the kind of awakening piece and it wasn't what I pictured when he did it, but it was super cool. And then I was like, oh yeah, we could totally go in this direction. So it was like a whole sort of new way of thinking. It was cool. It evolved as I wrote it, Kaylin. It started off with like more of what we talked about and then it, I don't know, it wanted to be something a little bit different. So I just went with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about it, Adam. Like, from from what I took away from the the conversation is the blackness is like the deep rim where there's no dreams, you're just you're out. Um, 
And then as you start to come to, it then puts him in sort of like a, an enjoyable dream state and then he wakes. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Like, I guess I was undecided about like the black bits. It was kind of like, almost like you, you get a glimpse of the, the, the dream is artificial, right? It's, it's comforting. It's kind of nice. But he senses in the back of the mind that it's not like it's not real. Some, somebody is playing a a film for you know for him. So it's okay. It's great, you know. And then he goes down the waterfall. There's like kind of a stressful moment, and then he falls in a pool of water, and this is how he wakes up every morning. Oh, Kilo must have gone under a bridge or something. Um, but I, I wanted to. I had in the back of my mind contrasting this later to when he's unplugged and maybe like just sleeping naturally. Could you hear me the whole time? No, every time somebody calls me, I get kicked out. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, too popular. I would say, in, um, yeah, I just wanted to exactly have it the sense of like something artificial is like interfering with what would normally be like your regular dreams, right? And I had in the back of my mind that later right. on, when this person is unplugged, we can contrast that very nicely with um regular states so that's kind of what it got to like part of him he knows it's part of him is kind of a little uneasy because he's picturing that like why am i not kind of bumping into rocks and stuff and it's just too too perfect i guess yeah let me send let me um let me ask in terms of um i i think may help with uh you know, the creative process. It, it's a little bit outside the norm here, but I'm reading this and there's um, an opportunity here, I think, uh, to, to put some visual, um, uh, you know, video behind some of this sort of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm wondering is what you guys think about as we progress through this, um, we, we read sections of it. Okay. And it's mm -hmm. draft form. But we read sections in it and we alternate the readings between Adam and Kate, Adam and Kate, right? Because you guys are the authors, right? Yeah. So we're read we're alternating the, the, the sections and pick sections where it, it could be any video on um you know background of that we find on YouTube or anywhere, right? We'll give proper attribution to it, but we are making it new because we're trying to put it into um, you know, the reading of something that you guys are creating. So I, f I feel fairly confident that that's something that's, you know, not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so what I need for producing that is I need a link to something, you know, some images that you think, you know, video images that you think are, uh, you know, kind of cool and represent, you know, what you're thinking with the narrative. We've already done this before, right? When we had you start to freeform associate. Yeah. So. We'll we'll start to put something behind it, and then each one of those can have, um, you know, they're like minor little plugs for, um, you know, the dawn of a new beginning. This is our working title, right? May not be the final final title, but I'll start to put it in a spreadsheet, and each one of those themes are ones that you can drop in on a on, on a Twitter post or a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post, because you know we're gonna have the titles somewhat sum the you know the concept behind that section of the reading right yeah now this is, has a lot to do with awakening and euphoric and surreal and you know this war between consciousness and you know these kinds of things but later on they're going to be fairly topical to you know um you know to relevant issues and i don't want to lose an opportunity to make sure that our workflow is 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 taking advantage of all of those um, you know, the creative process, but we can also catalog, catalog them, right? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. That's super cool, right? Um, we can, yeah, like read it, have some images, and maybe it's a 20 or 30 second clip, and we can throw it out there. Just, the whole idea of this is to gain a little bit of buzz around it and, you know, get enlisted, maybe some feedback from people as we're writing it, right? So, yeah, the more the better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I can't remember, did you did you set up your pre-order page for the book? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have to, I can't remember if we put that in all of your uh, blog posts, but we got to put that in the blog post so that people can help, you know, pre-order the book. And if there's a video in there, I mean, hey, we're, we're checking all the check boxes, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we can wrap the machine up. Now that we're like actually writing, and I know we took a big chunk of the summer off there, but I don't know, it took me a long time to write the first word. I knew the first line in my head, right? My dreams are not my own. But the rest of it, it took me like six weeks to finally actually do it. But now that I've kind of done it, you know, I woke up this morning and was like, ooh, I kind of want to write more. <laughs> right? it's, so, it takes a part of your soul every time you do it. Yeah, now, exactly. I, I, I want to give you a compliment to because sometimes we turn in on ourselves and we think that it's, you know, am I, am I, is this good? Is it, you know, because you're going to, you're going to compare this against everything you love in the genre of science fiction, right? Mm -hmm. This is not even a first draft because we're just, you know, we're so so listeners have to understand and you guys have to understand that this is just getting it on paper and you want it as raw as possible. But I will say as a total compliment to Adam, I really think it's good. Thank you. And and, and the reason why I think it is good is that you, you 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 I keep wanting to read the next paragraph, the next sentence you know, as I'm reading it and that's what you want to do. It's all about, it's kind of like a, a hook. You just, you want to just pull people along. Right. And so you're, you're checking that checkbox. And the other thing that you're doing really well is, you know, I, I am reading it and I'm thinking, could he, could he show it more? Right. This is all this, this truism of show, don't tell you, sure, yeah. but you're doing a really good job. Right. And so as long as you're aware of that, when to show, when to describe, how to change up the speed. And I got to let you have enough freedom to write and get it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so once we see how this fits in the whole and starts to develop in the chapter and in, in, in the first three chapters and in sections of the book, then we can do more, you know, a structural edits to it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like that. And mm -hmm. The other thing that I really like about it is that um, it, it seems like your writing style subtly pulls in a um, pulls in the narrative. And so this is the remnant of some talent. You have some talent that I'm noticing. And I want you to I want to acknowledge that you deserve a pat on the back for that, because I think there's there's there is a talent there. Right. And so, um, you know, remember that as you're kind of battling through that and and. And, and exercising a piece of your soul to the next piece of writing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think you've set the stage quite nicely here. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, even as I wrote it, you know, the whole idea of um, like a change, like I knew I kind of wanted to go down a stream and have something kind of intense happen. And then as I wrote it, I was like, actually, no, this this whole thing wants to disintegrate. Like. The reason why maybe this character starts skipping his sleep cycle is because he's freaked the F out because something is like freaking him out, right? Maybe there's a little more motivation there. So I kind of added that in. Um, so, Interesting. Yeah, I thought we could maybe play on that. Like if something in his subconscious is bothering him about something not right, then maybe that's like fighting against the, I don't know, the implant or something. There's something about him that's unique. Like, you know, it kind of had the, the system's like resetting. It's trying to reset, right? Something is like slipping. Um, anyway, we can play with that a little bit. Maybe we can go somewhere, maybe not, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I like the way you've captioned this. Like it says, here's one, it says, it's it's as if, as if I'm stationary and the world moves past me. I am powerless to stop the train from rolling and I know what's coming next. Um, and so, you realize that you could expand that into, you know, 10 or 15 paragraphs, right? I mean, you really could, but you've captured it. And that's what I want you to do because you can, you know, you could take that and keep expanding it or say, no, no, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you've kind of captured that idea, right? And, um, you know, that's when we pass the baton on to Kate next to do, you know, I'm assuming we might do like a, a rotating sort of thing here, right? seems to work i think yeah right um yeah. the only word of caution though is that 
um, that's going to be a real challenge, I think, in a co- because Adam might really develop his own sort of style, and we we might want to do something where um, you know Kate's writing is going to be in a um, you know, developing something different so that there's like a cohesive Kateness and a cohesive Adamness mm-hmm. to this, right? Yeah. But, you know, I wonder as we do it more, if that becomes more obvious, then we kind of come up with a, a way to do it, right? Maybe someone takes on a role of uh, of editor at some point to try and like make them sound a little closer or I don't know. I don't know what the, what the answer is at this point. Like you said, let's get it on paper and see. Let's see what it evolves or what it what it wants to do, right? Like, well, the, the way I like it is that not doing it in a like now Kate does the next section in this series. Mm-hmm. Kate's already started. She started her piece in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. And so if she can grow from that nucleus and then come to meet you, you guys can be um, you know coming from different directions. You guys could be working backwards and forwards in time. Uh, you know, Kate could be doing more of the the character development and dialogue. Um, uh, okay, so how was it? So Kate's piece was um, like really action packed and situational in that pod, as it mm-hmm. you know was kind of going that countdown and the intensity. So I'd like to see Kate develop that piece, right, with mm-hmm. the idea that if this is the opening to the book. Either I want to see you, I'd like to see you kind of move backwards, you know, to where um, and, and, and meet Adam. So you guys are actually coming, you know, to, um, you know, to a point. Yeah. Okay. And then you'll be able to pass each other or, you know, like uh, that's that's what I'd really like to see. Um, because you can understand that you can have a paragraph or a chapter one where it has this. And a completely separate chapter two, which is, you know, involving characters, maybe some character development and switching the sort of storyline, right? Or not storyline, you know, but they're developing in different sort of um, uh, imagined spaces. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's another way we could do it, Adam, too. I'm reading um, The Way It Kings right now. And... Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting because they like each character has their own storyline and then they, they integrate, which we talked about doing. But we could actually do it where we take on different characters completely and write those storylines and then have them intersect. Yeah. I, I think let's I think we start with it as Dan described, let's start as expanding our scenes and I, I think maybe a natural way forward will evolve. Like maybe we reach a point and then we each kind of like edit each other's scenes or I don't know. I don't I don't know what the what the right answer is. It's but so cool. It. It's so cool yeah. because you could pass it off and then take, you know, Adam could take on Kate's writing and Kate could take I mean, I'm not saying that's what we do, but liter I think it's a really cool yeah, you, like, you know literary statement. Right. I could add take Caitlin's stuff, add my Adamness to it and vice versa. Right. Yeah. Right? You know, we'll I love it. What, All right. Um, something like that, right? And then we've got a cohesive thing where it kind of has a sense of both our ideas. Anyway, okay, so Kate, so I'm, I'm gonna, exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna ask, um, you know, each of you both of this. Um, I'm gonna uh, first of all ask Kate where he think, where you think Adam should go next in the sequence. So that pretend that's chapter one and chapter two. Okay, now, and then I'm going to ask Adam to say where he thinks it should go. And then we're going to flip it and say, let's remember, you know, Kate's piece. Kate, where do you want to go, either forward or backward in your timeline? And Adam, where would you think that that can develop? Okay, so just again, let me summarize and say we're focusing on on Adam's piece that he wrote today. Where do you think this next chapter should go? Um, And... Um, and then Adam, you can respond to say where you think it should go. Okay. Okay. So my immediate thought was uh, after after the this wake up, it needs to go into a very stark, stressful uh, experience of interfacing with work. Like something needs to jolt him out. He's been like coming through this like slow kind of wake up. It's been a little bit 
messy, but then all of a sudden it has to be like, you don't have time to relax. You don't grab a coffee and relax. You're on to your next meeting, right? Like, shake your head, go, 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 go. Especially with having like sleep cycles, that's where it's like a three hour time frame and you just book meetings around it. Like, I, th- I think that there needs to be this now in the zone stressful moment to see that kind of like, you don't get a chance to wake up like you used to. So mm-hmm. you wake up and you go. Um, so I thought it'd be like a really interesting sort of like all of a sudden, I think you had a, a notification that he swiped out of the way. Like immediately it should be alert, 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 like causing this stress cycle. And he's like, oh yeah, I got to move. Okay. That was my thought. Yeah, no, I absolutely. I love the idea of like I had that little piece at the end there. I started to get into like maybe the next scene where I just wanted to show the setting a little bit, right? Like I was picturing in my head, you know, a, a world where like every surface that you're walking along is like giving you information and it's like super interactive and super cool, right? But I do want to definitely emphasize. Oh, we lost her. Come on back. Somebody phoned her. <laughs> so I do want to emphasize, uh, you know, the whole idea of, you know, falling in a pool of water and you wake up like it kind of gets you going, but you kind of wake up refreshed and like ready to rock. Right. Um, versus he had this intensely stressful experience and now the world's going to hit him like a hammer. Right. So I want to really play with the effect of that. Um so I, I agree. I think that's where we go next, like right into the world and a little bit. I'm gonna object. Oh, and I think Ooh, I think okay. too that maybe he what's that? No, finish your thought and then we'll hear what Dan thinks. Okay. I think too that maybe he should be trying to put like a ticket in to fix the dream app that he's got going on because he realizes there's something wrong and he's like, This shouldn't be the way. I thought what I pictured was maybe somewhere subtly, if he's talking to somebody like, hey, you ever seen like weird lights in your dream or whatever? And they say no. And like what I was kind of imagining is I had this, I called it the flow. Like I just made that up, but like this flow of information. But I kind of had thought is like he glimpsed it in his dream. Like he saw the flow, which is, you know, and he almost lost himself, right? Like it was a dangerous like it was a kind of a scary moment right um anyway that's what i was thinking in my head when i wrote it okay okay so i'm going to tell you guys why i disagree and it's up for discussion so there's um there's a moment where uh in every story they're hooked it's like a doorway Mm -hmm. So there's there's emotional buy-in where people do not want to go back through that door. And I want to talk about that um, scene that Kate wrote as that transitional scene to throw them into the novel. I think that is the point where they're not going back. Right. Okay. Right. They're in this pod. They're being, uh, you know, shot out. They're, you know, complete. Like, this is like, holy shit, what's happening? Right. Mm-hmm. And Kate did a wonderful job yeah. of being able to build this, um, like, uh, insecurity, um, you know, and I, and I think for inspiration, Kate was using the fact that like, you know, what happened if we don't have our phone? Oh my God. You know, like this feeling, I want you to k- do the character development. I want people to care about the characters. So the bridge between, you know, where Adam has, has, has introduced the, the novel, very surreal. I think the listener and the reader is, they're, they're curious. We need to, we need to change right. the curiosity to, I give a shit about these characters. Hmm. I'm ah, like, I like that. You, they need to have buy-in to the character. So think character development, that's the bridge to the point where they shoot out of the shuttle. Okay. Okay. Because I know you want to make it like yeah. impact now and this and that, but like have them care about this this character, their their family, their kids, their emotional. Their, their what are the themes of this people of the like that are universal themes of like um, 
one could say love or you know make them human okay, okay? character development well, I, but, character character, yeah. character development yeah i think okay we have to be careful because as much as we make them human i think that's kind of the point is that humanity lost lost sort of the connection pieces right so how do we uh how to make them relatable but also portray that that's that's been lost in society okay so take take one of these examples of george orwell right he lives in a dystopian yeah. uh future 1984 that was written in 1948 and he's fearful he's walking around an oppressive um state of surveillance um but they still um they still relate to the reader <laughs> the reader's still thinking about holy shit this sucks <laughs> right like i don't want to live there right so yeah. you can accentuate all the um you know detached uh like alienating aspects of technology and the future okay you can do that you can but you need to do that and build character right you need to do it so that people care about that particular character and if you remember in 1984 he had seen a young woman who was part of the establishment you know um and 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 he was he was fearful of her right and later on that sort of develops Right. So he's, um, you know, also trying to navigate something that is um, uh, like you really care about this guy. You really, yeah, you know, he goes and visits the neighbor and the kids are like kind of crazy and willing to kind of think on him and stuff. So you're getting an idea of what society's like. So you have between what Adam's doing now and to the 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 pod scene you have all that time to develop the characters so they 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 give a shit mm -hmm. okay they have to give a shit about your characters because there will always be that point where there is a point of no return and it's like you just gave the novel a gift by making that no return point the point that they're shot out in a in a space pod right okay no i I'm gonna have to contemplate this a little bit, but I, I think we can. I, I don't see why we can't sprinkle in a, a bit of both, right? Like to move the story forward, we're gonna have some interactions from a work perspective. But 100%, like what what makes this character tick? Like what do they really care about? And I think this is an opportunity to showcase that, right? Is is it like family? Is it kids? Is it a cause? Is it right? Like. But um, what is it? You know? I want to point, there's two wor words I want you to really, you guys really, really deeply think about. And one's comedy and one is tra a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, um, and both of them are very, very powerful. Now, there's subtle variations of them, but fundamentally, I want you to think of comedy and tragedy. Now, if ultimately you think, hey, look, our... Our novel, our science fiction novel, is not a comedy because, you know, it's not like a sitcom. Uh, I, I want to warn against that mental trap. The idea is, is that if you're trying to poke fun, Animal Farm is a comedy. <laughs> right. Right. Because you're poking fun at something, right? And so you want to show the absurdness of it. The tragedy means that the hero has to overcome something and go through uh, a journey of sorts, okay? Right. So, so if you want to, um, so think about that as you're, as you're writing this now, you're right. Absolutely. You can show busyness. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can show, um, the absurd nature of the way our reality is going to be in the future. Remember the jettison scene where you're pushed off into the, into that pod means that all, all of the aspects of. Um, and if I'm remembering the scene correctly, there's going to be aspects of losing, you know, your health care, not being connected to the mainframe, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of this busyness that we're talking about, then build it through character development to show how that busyness and how that character is relatable. OK, so you can show it as very, very, very busy. But if it's 
does the character show as the protagonist? Is it somebody that you relate to? You know, you're kind of rooting for them, right? And then it's like, oh shit, what happens? Now they're being jettisoned out. Holy shit, we really, like, this is upsetting to me. You know, mm-hmm. this person's not going to have healthcare. This person's not going to, doesn't have access to like, what's going to happen when they can't connect to the, you know, to the, you know, to the supercomputer. Like, I'm going to be really upset about that. You mm-hmm. want to make people upset about that. Right. Because they can, they will not put the book down. They will not say, I, I'm committed. I'm too far committed in this book. I cannot not read this book. Yeah, I, I picture in my mind almost like a like an avalanche starting, right? Like this opening scene and then the, you know, the shuttle scene. From, from now until then, you want to get a sense of what this character is about, what they care about, kind of a little bit of their background maybe, and then have their world kind of fall apart around them. Until boom, they're flying on a shuttle, right? And it's very like, like you said, you want to know more. Oh my God, what's happening to this poor person, right? Like you care, you you really care. And you're kind of distressed that this person's life has fallen apart, right? And feel free, you got to bring in some other characters, okay? Mm-hmm. So you know, like uh, colleagues, um, family members. Uh, a boss, right? These are kind of elements that are, I think, important to how, you know, later on you guys want to talk about, like, you know, what is the archetypal role of the boss in the future? Mm-hmm. Is it, is it somebody that you can't go into an office and talk to? I mean, I don't know. I mean, these are all kind of things that I think you guys are kind of, um, you know, massaging around, right? So who are the other people involved and, you know, bring them in as supporting characters, Right. Develop, develop uh, dialogues are sometimes the easiest way to do that. Um, but I wouldn't heavily rely on dialogue. Right. Just but whatever you can do to kind of get that, you know, to get that development out is going to be really important. OK. So, OK. Definitely some things to think about. And like Caitlin and I's process has, has worked pretty well. Like we kind of go on our whiteboard with sticky notes and we kind of like plot out some of this stuff, right? So there's at yeah. least a, a grand vision of a high level sequence of events that we think is going to happen, or at least themes that we want to do here or there, or whatever. And I think we can kind of play in that realm a little bit and then just keep writing. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what about animals? Any dogs or domestic pets in the future? That's a great idea. Ooh. Something totally funky, I think. <laughs> It'd be super fun, right? <laughs> You know, what a talking cat that has a castle personality or something. What is it? The brain of a teenage witch? What's that? Sabina, yeah, the t- or whatever it is, the, the teenage witch that has the, the talking cat. The brain of a teenage witch. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and even in this in this reality, does it have to be a real animal? Could it be that avatar that I mentioned that's like, good morning? But, you know, could that be kind of a funky character in itself? Um, yeah, there's a, I actually, yeah, there's, you know, there's, 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 um, you know, documentaries of this about, you know, people that are dating online characters that are completely fictional. Right. And it's like, don't take away my character. And you know, like, they're just, that's, you know, that's their social life. Mm. You know, um, that future is becoming a little bit more, uh, I guess, I guess real for us like in terms of potential right i mean extrapolate this with the younger generation that don't have you know we're you know we're talking we're a year to two years in on covid right now but this isolation what if it ends up being cultural mm. and online environments and you know like teenagers i i'm i'm more or less okay in a small bubble but you remember that age group where you're like, I want to go out and I want to meet people and I want to see other teenagers and I want to, you yeah, know, totally. well, I want to, ex- you know, I, I want to exchange you're... fluids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. we can't help it. We have to do that. We want to right. do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was picture like maybe you have it all in the virtual app, kind of like Pokemon, right? Everybody's paired with like a you know, virtual character i don't know there's, there's so many cool things we can do and kind of like ready player one right the oasis the world is whatever you want it to be and you can live in this world or that world or the other world whichever one you like 
right? Where the rules are different because it's all virtual and it's all. Um, let me give you an, another idea because I think you're imagining kind of like the arrival of the character. And in terms of development, one of the easiest ways to develop a character is actually progressing them through a timeline. It's a very natural way to do it. Mm -hmm. So don't think that the person experiencing this awakening right now is the character that is in the pod. Okay. So let's imagine that the character in the pod has already had five years of being uh, made accustomed to that work environment, okay? Um, think about work-life environment, right? But let's think about what was that pivotal moment when you first got the job of uh, as an engineer, right? I mean, you guys had, you're both engineers, you go to school, and all of a sudden, you know, you realize that you got an adult oh, yeah. job now, yeah. right? You're, you're being put in, you're being, you know, you're being, you, this person could be recruited at an earlier age, but what happens when they're all of a sudden dialed in into like like into the mainframe, mm -hmm. right? Talk about that. I I kind of like that too, Adam, because like the the issue that's happening in his dream state could be like bringing the science and could be a result of having all this like extra cortisone stress in his system that he's it's kind of like the a little red flag that he's about to have a health episode. So we could actually then flip the timeline and go back and talk about some of the stuff that happened and take him through a journey as well. So it doesn't need to be all chronological, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Like stress, like that's what's breaking down, right? He's having that. This is the warning sign, right? That, that yeah. he just experienced. Right? And then you can back it up and like, you could back it up a couple of weeks ahead of that or a month ahead of that and then take them on a little journey where they get to know them and connect. Yeah. Okay. And this is where your sticky notes and all your framing and stuff yeah, is yeah. going to really be important. So look it through, right? <laughs> all right. No, this, is, this is fun. I like this. Now, I'm, now we're on a roll. <laughs> okay. So let's, uh, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're almost 40 minutes into it. So let's kind of, you guys know what you're going to do for, um, you know, next week. <clears throat> okay. And yeah. I, I want the, uh, the recordings and, um, a, a few inspirational, uh, YouTube videos. So you have one recording, a voice soundtrack, and then give me a couple YouTube videos for, you know, visual inspiration. Okay. Um, and then we'll make, yeah. Uh, make some clips and each one of those should be released um, you know and accompanying this section okay yeah I like that yeah. so I like for example I can make a clip of me reading the piece I just wrote and then I can find some stuff for inspiration and then Caitlin can do the same and then so that's part of the you got the writing and then the inspiration every week love it that's cool and I, and I think what this does it actually there's actually um, a function to this madness too, because you actually see it reflected in a way that's not just in, in your imagination, right? Mm -hmm. You're now seeing something visual. You're seeing it on a, on a, on a platform like YouTube, you're seeing it reflecting back to you in the, in the same substrate artist substrate that is YouTube, right? You're seeing that you're seeing it with images that we have today with your voice. You can reflect on it, meditate on it, um, and use it for inspiration. And what I'm, what I'm going to actually do is um, uh, uh, do a spreadsheet. It sounds goofy, but you know what? We, uh, I'm kind of a systems guy. We have a spreadsheet, and the titles are going to make all of the are, are going to reflect all of these um, sections, so that we can also make something later that's thematic. So anytime you're like, um, you know, here's a section of a reading that's like angry or frustration or something like that, right? Be like you know, you have that master list, right? And it'll be really good for you to, you know, naturally express something outside, right? Uh, whether it's in the workplace and the consulting, uh, you, you know, realms that you're doing, um, or just kind of spreading the word, it'll be more at your fingertips, right? So I'm, I'm, you have to wait and see how that works a little bit. But I think it's, uh, I, I've had some good success with that. Okay. Cool. Amazing. No, I think it's a great idea. We trust you. We trust <laughs> you on this crazy journey. <laughs> yeah, awesome. 
Uh-huh. Well, the, the, re- the recollection is a big problem, right? So this is actually one thing that I'd like to see. I don't know. I'm hoping to see some technology develop uh, in this in this future where um, where memory is actually like that recall function is actually accentuated with technology, right? And right now, I mean, I write about this all the time, and I call it the Google Oracle. And it is, you know, we're like heliotropic plants bent earthward. Right. Because we're walking around doing this. Right. Mm, right. It's like, you know, we're not looking up at the sun. We're, we're down looking at this this device, which is the lights coming from that, not from, you know, not from the, the sun, you know, that we've been standing, you know, staring into prior to even life as we knew it. Right. I mean, you know, now we're, we're, we're you know, staring at these devices and the proximity of that device is only going to be coming closer and closer till it's like, you know, we have a Google function in our head. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, if I look up something, I'm like, I I don't even look at a map anymore, but I used to, and you guys know what it's like to look at a coordinate system on a, on a map and unfold it. Right. But I just put it in on the phone and drive there. You know, kids will never know the pain of, being the navigator while your dad drives the truck and he's yelling at you for directions, right? <laughs> they never know it. Uh, but on the same token, we never knew what it was like to write with calligraphy in a fountain pen, like a dipped fountain. Like, sure, ballpoint killed handwriting. Oh, oh Kate, Kate did so. Yeah. <laughs> Not because I'm old, because I took calligraphy classes. <laughs> As one does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know what to, you've, you've thrown a mind blank up. You, I, I heard uh, calligraphy classes and I just, you, you, you wipe my brain. I don't know what to say to that, Kate. You got to tell me more about, you know, this, was it a, a horrific time of your life? An awkward time? Was it, was it, uh, you know, artistic time? What, what was this? I don't know. I, we had a teacher who had calligraphy classes, so we did it. I don't know. Something to do. Small town. Okay. Uh, we, also then, had, we also had a bagpipe group. So, you know, join the bagpipe band. You know how to you know how to blow on bagpipes. <laughs> yeah. Really? Do you, do you have bagpipes? <laughs> no, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> I have the practice chanter. It sounds like you're killing a duck. Right. I'll bet. I'll bet learning the bagpipes is a horrendous experience. Oh, my neighbors hated me. Yeah, I'll bet. Your parents must be patient, I would imagine. Yeah. Very supportive, probably. (laughs) (laughs) There's the shout out to mom and dad. Yeah. (laughs) Here's Daniel giving you a shout out, mom. There we go. Dad, there we go. You know, mention (laughs) on the air. Um, Adam, what's your, uh, what's, I know you're, uh, you're a ninja, a secret ninja. So tell me about that. Uh, How'd you get into well, that? How'd I get into that? Uh, well, let's see. I've been t- doing Muay Thai for 20, 1994, 27 years now. Holy crap. That makes me feel old. <laughs> but I got into it because uh, I was having trouble with retaliatory penalties playing hockey and soccer when I was a teenager. Actually, preteen, I guess, when I was like 12. And uh, my parents wanted to put me in something that, you know, might teach me a little bit of focus and control and discipline. And my dad worked with someone who had a brother that did it. And I walked in the first day and they showed me some cool moves. And I was just like, show me everything. <laughs> Good for you. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of my history with this board. Yeah, to stay with it, right? I mean, um, I guess maybe that's, you know, kind of what a parent hopes is they, they, they sign a kid up and it changes their life and they stick with it. And it kind of helps them through all those, you know, those, those, uh, I don't know, years. I, 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 you know, I grew up in Alberta, just like you guys. Right. And, and the the family values of saying, Hey, you know, are the, are the kids actually doing something or are they involved in an organized sport? Um, you, you know, and, uh, you know, so those were family values that were really important to our family as well. And, uh, I, I always, fortunate enough to play 
play hockey for, uh, you know, the majority of my years and then ended up doing uh, air cadets for, you know, the balance of my, oh, cool. my youth. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was yeah. good. Well, I, you know, I personally, I love, I'm, you know, as I get older, I'm very particular about hobbies or things that I take up. So I think one of the reasons I, it took me so long to like actually write was because I was like, <laughs> I might start and this might become like a long-term thing mm. and you know maybe it will we'll see so. a real integrated part of your guys' identity right and yeah. you know so. become the well i mean i'm already a published author. author that's right kaylin has a children's book yes it's about toots <laughs> oh wonderful <laughs> i did some real deep soul searching for that dan and uh yeah there's deep <laughs> Huge character development in my potty training children's book. That's awesome. Well, I, I have to say there was a, a children's author that signed up on Planksip and uh, you know, we're helping her and she's recording videos and stuff like that. So, cool. you know, I I just told her, I said, I said, well, you know, it's not gonna show up on the Planksip stream, but we, you know, we can definitely, you know, work with you. She's a wonderful personality. So uh yeah, uh, you know, maybe she's right. watching. I don't know, you know. Okay, we'll say hello. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, so thank you, Dan, so much. Yeah. You okay, guys. <clears throat> well, stay awesome. It's the top of the hour, and until next week. Um, or were we doing every couple of weeks? I can't remember. Are you on the calendar for next week? Two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. Okay. That means you guys got two weeks to get your homework done. And as I, uh, my university professors would always tell me, they would say. Um, do it sooner than later. So if you get it done in the week, then you can cruise for the balance of the week. If you there leave you it go. till the night before, then we have to hear Kate's sultry voice again. And that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <Not for more. laughs> All right. Thanks, Dan. Sounds good.